If you really want to learn Korean, there's no way getting around learning the Korean writing system, Hangul. Fortunately, learning this is relatively easy because it basically consists of 24 letters and once you know how to combine them to form syllables, you can basically read every Korean word. Now, on YouTube, there are a lot of great videos that teach Hangul, but what none of these videos tells you is that there are actually some exceptions to its otherwise really regular pronunciation. In this video, I am going to teach you 5 cases in which the pronunciation of Hangul is irregular. However, it's important that you already know Hangul, otherwise watching this video makes no sense. Number 1 Kyok, Chigut, Kyuk, Jiut These consonants are pronounced softer in the middle of a word than in the beginning of a word. Let's look at some examples. Kage, Todu, Pabo, Jeju these words, both of their two syllables respectively start with kyok, jigut, pyuk, and jiet. And even though we have the same letter twice, their pronunciation is a bit different. In kage, the first kyok sounds similar to a k, whereas the second one just sounds like a g. In todu, the first jigut sounds similar to a t, while the second one just sounds like a d. In pabo, the first pyuk sounds close to a P, while the second one sounds exactly like a B. And in Jeju, the first G sounds almost like a CH, while the second one sounds quite softer. Number 2 If a syllable ends with Kyok, Iung, Pyuk or Miem, and the following syllable starts with Riel, that Riel is pronounced like Niem. Easy, right? Here are some examples. Sengya, Hamnya. In the word sengyak, the first syllable ends with ieng and the syllable after starts with riel. In that case, you do not say sengyak, but sengyak. Same thing with hamnyak. Here we have the syllables ham and riang, but together they become hamnyang. A third example is the word tungni. In this case, we even have two irregularities. According to what we've learned, Tungnip should be pronounced as Tuknip, right? Now, when the ending consonant is Kyok, which is then followed by Riel, that Kyok becomes Ian. Tungnip. Here's another example. If you're into K-pop, you probably know this handsome guy. He's a member of the band Big Bang and is called Singni. But people who don't know Hangul usually pronounce his name as Singri because that's the way it's romanized. But it's wrong! The man is called Singni. Keep that in mind if you're a Big Bang fan. Number 3 If you've learned Hangul, you probably know that two real after each other sound just like a double L. Like in Mulla. But this is not the only case. If a syllable ends with Nien and the following syllable starts with real, or the other way around, it will sound like two real. Let's take these two words. Shille. Nulli. Separately, the characters are pronounced as shil ne and nun ri, but together they become shil le and nul li. Moving on to number four. Yet another case concerning riel. Uh, that's the worst letter ever. If a syllable ends with riel miem, that riel has no sound. Only the miem has except when the syllable right after starts with a vowel sound. My examples are sam and ungida. We have both riel and miem as ending consonants, but the riel is silent. Because there's no syllable after sam, and in ungida the syllable after riel miem starts with a consonant. Therefore you don't say salm or ulmgida, but sam and ungida. But what happens when I use sam in a sentence and attach the subject marker e to it? Salmi joa. Now we have a syllable after sam starting with a vowel sound. So in that case you can say the real becomes activated, making the sentence sound like salmi joa instead of sami joa. Sam, salmi. But be careful, there are also words which contain the ending consonants real peer and real tiet. There the real is actually always pronounced. Nolpta, halpta. Even though we have a consonant after the two ending consonants, the real is pronounced normally. Number 5. 
Last but not least, if a syllable ends with tiet and the following syllable starts with e, that tiet will sound like tiet. This is the case with words like kachi and puchida. You don't say kachi or puchida, but kachi and puchida. However, the pronunciation only changes with e. If there's another vowel after tiet, it sounds just normal. So, this word is not pronounced as katcha, but just katta. Katta, katchi. Now, after having looked at five cases of irregular Hangul pronunciation, you may be wondering why? Why do these cases even exist? The answer is easy simplified pronunciation. Some consonant combinations will tie a knot into your tongue, especially when talking quickly. I mean, Nulli just slides easier off your tongue than Nunri and Singni just sounds better than Singri. I hope my explanations weren't all too complicated and I also hope that you've learned something new watching this video. If that's the case, I would be happy if you hit that like button. Also, if you have a question about what I've talked about or a suggestion about what to explain in the next video, uh, just leave a comment. I will do more Korean lessons if people find them useful, so subscribe. Well then, see you again next time.